master here. Slave, slave, one piconet. The slave can belong to two piconets. So that's permitted. <coughs> I just call this figure two. And in particular, uh, it's also this is also possible. Uh, as I said a second ago, um, I can have if this guy is the master in that pico net. Actually, that's called this figure two. So here's a master and a slave. And a slave in this pico net, I'm going to draw that pico net to encompass, to, to slice through that node. It's a slave in this pico net, but it's a master in this pico net. So, an example of where that might occur, let's say, um, let me actually draw this a little bit over here. So this device that's being both master and let's say this slave is your Bluetooth handset. Or, yeah, your Bluetooth. I don't know what to draw it, but anyway. Um, that'll be your Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth headset for your cell phone. It's connecting to your cell phone, which is the master in this relationship. So it's the master in this particular Ethernet. That cell phone is a slave communicating with your laptop. And that laptop is the master in a PicoNet in which it's also communicating with, let's say, your wireless mouse. So that's an example of how that can occur. Okay, um, active devices, which include master and slaves, <laughs> uh, are assigned a three bit address, three bit active member address. A second ago, parked devices have an 8 bit parked member address. PI. Furthermore, the parked devices can be, uh, can be upgraded active devices uh, very quickly and as slots become available or as they have data to transmit. So that's that's uh, your basic overview of, of um, Bluetooth architecture. Basically it's star topology. Um, the hub of the star is the master and the, uh, the points of the star are the slaves or the Parker devices. <laughs>